is Miss Alex, and I work for the St. John's County Public Library System. Thank you so much for joining me for another Kids Art Lab today. I am so excited to share with you the artist we're going to be learning about today, so let's get right to it. Okay, we're going to be learning about Mira Schindel today. This is Mira. She was born in 1919. She passed away in 1988. And this is one of her creations that she's posing with. So I'll tell you a little bit more about that in just one moment. All right, a little bit about Mira. She was born June 7th, 1919 in Zurich, Switzerland. She went to school in Italy, um, but when she was 20 years old, she was forced to leave um, because she was Jewish. She was actually part Jewish um, and also Catholic, um, but she was classified as Jewish. And so she had to leave the country that she was living in. She moved around in Europe for quite a while um, before eventually emigrating to Brazil, all the way in South America in 1949. So that means she was 30 years old. Um, while she was in Brazil, um, she got very involved in modern art. She started playing around with language and writing in her artwork, um, but kind of reinvented. And you'll see why in just a minute. She remained in Brazil for the rest of her life, and she is known as one of the most groundbreaking artists of Brazil. Okay, this is um, one of those pieces of art, part of a series that you saw her posing with in the first photo that I showed you. This one is called Little Nothings. Um, it was created in 1964 out of rice paper. <laughs> Did you guess rice paper? Could you tell from looking at this picture? Probably not, huh? Rice paper is a very, very thin paper that you can pretty much see through. So she took that and she twisted it, she rolled it, she wove it together, braided it together, and would create all sorts of different shapes. Some of them, like in this photo, were piled up on the ground with some sticking out. Um, some of these sculptures were hanging down from the ceiling and you could walk around them. Um, it is a sculpture, but not what you would think of when you say sculpture, right? If I, if I tell you to imagine a sculpture inside your mind, you probably imagine something made out of clay, right? Or something like that, something really permanent. Um, but these sculptures by Mira were not meant to be permanent. They were very lightweight since they were made of rice paper and they were definitely not going to last forever. Hmm. Interesting. I wonder why she did that. Why do you think? I'd love to hear your thoughts in the comments. Why do you think she made sculptures out of very thin paper that could break so easily? Hmm. Okay, this is another very interesting kind of sculpture called Little Train. She created it in 1965 out of that very thin paper and nylon thread. That's it. Um, in this case, they are strung across a space, um, forming what she called a little train. You can imagine a little train going across, right? So it kind of fills up that empty space, but all the pages are completely blank and empty. It's kind of meant to show her, her loneliness, uh, the fact that she wasn't living in her home anymore. She moved around and she didn't feel entirely at home in Brazil. She was kind of unique and different from everyone else who lived there. Oh, did you see my kitty cat behind me? Okay. Now, this series of artworks is uh, kind of what Mira is known for, this is from a series of graphic objects, um, many of which she created between 1967 and 1968. And it's again made out of really thin rice paper and ink, not paint, ink. Uh, and there were over 2,000 different creations um, that she made in this series, lots of them just 
pieces of paper with ink all over them, and many of them were playing around with words, languages, and writing in general. You can see in this picture, there are huge letters, there are tiny itsy bitsy letters, and you can see them on both sides of the paper, right? If you look closely at this, you can see that some letters are backwards. And that's because they're printed on the other side of the paper, but it's so thin that you can see. These pictures were displayed between plexiglass, the two pieces of plexiglass that are completely see-through, the paper in the middle, um, and they were hung up so that viewers, like you and me, can interact with the art and walk around it and kind of see both sides of it. I know that's hard to imagine, maybe, inside your mind, so I went ahead and found a picture of them displayed in a museum. So you can get a better idea here of what they looked like. And I really like that they have those big windows in the back. So you can even see the light from the windows <laughs> through some of these, right? That's some really thin paper. Now, not all of those um, creations have just printed letters on them. Some of them have her handwriting. There are words and phrases in different languages because Mira spoke several, at least, I think at least three or four languages. And she played around with mixing those all together. So what do you think? Are these writing? Are they art? Are they somewhere in between? Hmm. Okay. This is an untitled piece that was done in 1981, so a little bit later than those that we've looked at so far. It's a little bit more traditional because it is painted on canvas. Uh, Mira used acrylic paint, tempera paint, and some gold, some gilt um, for those letters there. Now what's different also is that there's color here, but she still uses a horizon line. So do you see where the two different shades of yellow match up there in like the bottom quarter of the painting. You've got the darker below and you've got the lighter yellow up top. And that line that they form where they meet, that's called the horizon line. And it creates some space and some dimension on the painting so that it's not just all one color, it breaks it up for your eyes. And those letters are painted in gold. Mira was very interested in Chinese art at that time, and so she was trying out some different techniques, and that's where this gold came from. But I wonder why she chose these letters specifically. Hmm. When I was researching, I didn't come up with any specific reasons, but some letters did have different kinds of symbols to her. So, interesting. What letters would you use in a painting like this? Hmm. Let me know in the comments below, okay? Okay, it's time to make some art. We are going to be inspired and make our own version of that last painting we looked at, that untitled work by Mira. Okay, just one moment.
so much for watching and doing some art with me. Please check out more of our programs and events on our website, sjcpls.org, our YouTube channel, youtube.com slash sjclibraryvid, or our Facebook page, facebook.com slash sjcpls. Have a great one.